everyone. Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Bree, and joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Sarah Pascoe, and Ed Gamble, Nathan Caton, Hugh Dennis, and Ed Byrne. We start with a round called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what's happening. Here's a picture of the new Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn. So what's going on here? Has he been sleeping in the bin on the right? <laughs> <laughs> the idea it could be the oldest delivery boy in the world still hasn't figured out how to hold a pizza correctly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I suspect he's dressed up for his first meeting with the Queen. Simply first day at big school. <laughs> is, is it breaking mm. news? Marks and Spencer's murder of Sports Direct. <laughs> I think possibly it's page three of the Socialist Worker. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you told me that was Jeremy Corbyn. For, for a second, I was worried that's what Charlie Brown looks like now. <laughs> And that folder actually contains Snoopy's ashes. <laughs> Too much now. Please, Too please. Much. Snoopy's long dead. I think it's a uh, 66 year old legend still got it going on. <laughs> I reckon the, the owners of number 48 are probably very proud to be able to show off their garden like that. <laughs> <laughs> Tuesday! Yeah. It was a Tuesday! <laughs> the bees are collected on a Tuesday! Yeah, I bet they're more surprised than anyone that one of their gnomes just came to life and walked yeah. off. <laughs> <laughs> Is he such a dedicated socialist that he refuses to look to the right, even then that's the direction <laughs> he is in fact looking? Yeah. <laughs> How do you say that? But ultimately, I'm sorry, well, you were all born bad t-shirts and shorts. It's just socks with the, with, the, with the trainers is the only genuinely offensive thing there. Yeah, and not using cocoa butter. And not using cocoa butter. Ah, yeah, he he's, he's a 66-year-old man. I'm not, so, I think so. There's okay. no age restriction on cocoa butter. <laughs> I'm really 55. <laughs> It is Jeremy Corbyn who was elected leader of the Labour Party on Saturday, winning a landslide majority of 59.5% of the vote. Uh, so, uh, how are we doing? The new era under Corbyn. It's exciting. Um, it's really exciting. I'm so happy and I'm not going to let you guys ruin it for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to. That's reasonable, isn't it? Because, I mean, there's nothing weird about Jeremy Corbyn at all, is it? <laughs> Right there, isn't it? Because in this, in an era of identikit politicians, it is about time we had a leader of a major party who looks like he should be advertising canal boat holidays. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not surprised that he won. I'm surprised that he won by like, such a large majority. Like he got so many votes. Like even the organisers of the Qatar World Cup were going, "How the hell he do that?" <laughs> His first congratulation call was from Sepp Blatter. Actually, just. Uh... <laughs> I feel really sorry for him because even though he's actually won this, people in Labour don't even seem to like him. And I think it's because he is so good. Like, he's a saint. He's so pure. He's so principled. <laughs> <laughs> he collects pictures of drain covers. OK. We yeah. is, is that a thing? He is the nerd of the nerds. And obviously he's not the only MP who's got a large collection of pictures of manholes. <laughs> but he's... <laughs> I also, the weird thing is because he's, he's an Arsenal supporter, he's a good match, but the... Uh, that but comes the, as no surprise, yeah, well, he's, 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 Yes, well, he's a season, isn't he, for God's sake, but... Well, not so much that, any... but it's a bunch of underperforming Reds who are hooked on the outmoded <laughs> concepts of a foreign intellectual who, when they tried to put a team together this year, couldn't get anybody decent to join them. <laughs> That's funny. Weapons grade analogy there. No, it's it's it's. I mean, the, how did Cameron react? Do you see the Cameron's reaction to it? Security is the key word. There's yes. a lot about security. Uh, he sent, uh, sent out this tweet. In fact, no one sent out this exact tweet, but it came from the Labour Party is now a threat to our national security, our economic security, and your family security. <laughs> Not my family. My family are fine. We live in a big house with two policemen outside the front. But your family, where are they now? Do you think that for a second? Look around. Can you see them? No, I can't see them either. He's climbed in the window and stolen them. That's what you do. <laughs> your family are gone, my friend. And I have a unique set of skills to return my family. <laughs> I will... Oh, whatever. He, Liam Neeson does. Um, you, see, you see that tweet and then you see a picture of Jeremy Corbyn 
supposedly the most dangerous man in Britain. This is the man who's a 66-year-old beige pensioner who's a pacifist vegan cyclist. The most <laughs> dangerous man in Britain. He's in trouble if there's a lorry turning left and he hasn't had his B12 supplements. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think the, the, the subtext is that the Labour Party is now a threat to our national security, economic security and your family security because now they've become completely unelectable? We Tories are going to go hog wild on this country! <laughs> it feels like Cameron's got the Labour Party mixed up with the bad guys from Transformers. <laughs> Who are the bad guys in Transformers? The Decepticons. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I think we've just spotted the nerd of the nerd <laughs> of the nerd. <laughs> I think that'd be exciting. I was saying to my friend, like, imagine if we had a genuinely pacifist prime minister. You spend the defence budget on education, you put Trident on eBay. Like, it just, uh, it'd be so brilliant. And my friend was like, yeah, and then what about if Britain is invaded and everyone's family is killed? Like, yeah, he probably won't get re-elected. <laughs> <laughs> Great thing. If you do buy Trident on eBay, I think it's not a bad idea, but if you do, if you're yeah. buying it, come and collect it. It's not, mm. the, it's not the kind of thing you want delivered. <laughs> <laughs> I actually agree with uh, Corbyn about the whole Trident yeah. stuff, because I'm, I'm not a massive fan of Trident, I'm more of an airwaves person myself. <laughs> <laughs> What has been the response of the new Shadow Cabinet? I was very excited by the Shadow Cabinet. No um, way. Yes. Lots <laughs> <laughs> of people that I'd never heard of before, and the minute I heard of them, I loved them. <laughs> <laughs> it made me... Him, Jeremy Corbyn's Shadow Cabinet made me understand why people play Premiership Football Manager. <laughs> it's going to be an amazing team. It's played play too much on the left. <laughs> it, 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 it's, and they, but they share the ball. The... Including with the other team. But their goals are unattainable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, sorry, I just had a moment where I sounded exactly like my father and I need to shake that off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And also, it has the two, twins. The Eagles. Twins, twins. yeah. The Eagles. Oh, twins. Oh, and, no, I and, love yes. this. Business I and like defence, yeah. isn't yeah. it? Appointed Angela Eagle and at the same time appointed Lord Falconer. And you wonder if <laughs> Lord Falconer... <laughs> Is there to control Angela Regal? <laughs> Here, Angela. Yes, in other political news, who did David Cameron manage to offend this week? Everyone. <laughs> Just by just by being him. Yeah. Okay. Just, no, so, no, the just guy, by sneaking he, up behind them, going, "Where's your family now?" <laughs> <laughs> he offended Yorkshire, didn't he? Mm. He offended Yorkshire. Said he knew that they hated everybody else, didn't know that they hated each other more. And he said this when he, he was actually going to watch uh, England against Australia in a one-day cricket match at Headingley, or as he likes to call it, the home of Aston Villa. <laughs> <laughs> You know that people from Yorkshire hated everyone inside of Yorkshire, but it's quite charming. Uh, is that a thing? Is that but a thing? They, they, they have a massive yeah. rivalry, but also within Yorkshire they have a rivalry because it's all split oh, up, it's isn't all it? West Into north, yeah, south, yeah. east, and west. So people from Leeds, they hate people from London because they regard them as southern. People from Leeds, they hate people from Sheffield because they regard them as southern. People from Leeds, they hate people in Beeston because although it's Leeds, it's South Leeds. <laughs> <laughs> To be honest, I'm not really interested in this story. The question I've been asking myself since the beginning of this is, does Angela Eagle tweet? <laughs> <laughs> or does she just go, ah! Yes. <laughs> Check out her account and it's just hundreds of, like, <laughs> A H H H H H H H and then a mouse exclamation mark. Yorkshire does have an excellent accent though. One of the finest accent jokes in the world is one about the Yorkshireman whose dog dies and he goes to a jeweler's and says, I want a statue made of me dog. And the jeweler says, Do you want a eighteen carrot? He says, No, I want a chewing bone. <laughs> A Yorkshireman has invented a replacement for antibiotics. Uncle Biotics. <laughs> 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 
not the vaccine. No, no wonder they hate each other if they're telling each other those <laughs> jokes. <laughs> You've ruined Christmas again, Dad. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> the end of that round. The points go to Ed, Hugh, and Nathan. <laughs> now we play a round called "You've Got to Be Corbinet to Win It." <laughs> this game involves Nathan Caton and Ed Gamble. So if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launched a wheel of news, and whoever chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. Okay, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. And the first topic is home life. Nick. Yeah, I could talk about home life. Um, I, uh, I still live at home with my mum still. <laughs> Thanks for the judgmental silence. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I live at home. Um, my, my mates give me the most stick for it, because I'm the last one in my group of friends who still lives at home uh, with my mum. They've all moved out, so they see me as a mummy's boy. And every time they see me, they're like, Nathan, what's wrong with you, man? Why are you still at your mum's, man? Are you embarrassed? Why are you still at your mum's? Why are you still at your mum's? It's like, I live in West London. Have you seen house prices? I'm not going anywhere, man. <laughs> if anything, I'm looking at my mum thinking, when are you going to bloody leave? <laughs> Clinging on, let it go, woman. <laughs> She's going to slap the black off me when she sees this. <laughs> so, yeah, I like peace and quiet. Although, uh, to be honest, at home, I, I, I'm not getting a lot of peace and quiet at the moment. Uh, mainly because of my mum and my stepdad. Uh, they got married quite recently. And um, I'm happy for my mum. You know, she's found happiness. She deserves it. However, at the moment, they're going through um, that whole that, that honeymoon phase where they're having sex all the time. And, yeah, it is bloody disturbing, man. Because <laughs> uh, my bedroom is, like, right next door. So, like, every time they do it, I hear everything. Like, um, a few Saturdays ago, right, it's late at night. I'm about to go to sleep. From next door, I can hear my stepdad going, Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, lad, oh, lad, say something nasty, say something nasty, say something nasty. <laughs> so I screamed out, You're not my real dad! <laughs> Thank you very much, Ed and Ben. OK, that leaves us with Ed. Let's see what topic you've been left with. And the topic is diet. I hope this isn't just a hint that I need to lose weight. Uh, so I've, I've lost quite a lot of weight recently. Uh, anyway, I've lost uh, about six stone in the last uh, three years. Cheers, guys. Thanks. I mean, no. Too late. You went with the British reaction. Thank you very much. Just couldn't give a shit, mate. Carry on. We don't... Stop showing off. We don't want to hear about it. <laughs> Found myself in a bit of a nightmare situation recently. Uh, I went to the Middle East to do some gigs. Uh, now, that bit was nice, that was lovely, but they put you up in a hotel where the food is all-you-can-eat buffets three times a day for ten days. Now, this is a nightmare scenario for me because I cannot be trusted at an all-you-can-eat buffet. Sometimes I don't even remember the buffet bit. All I remember is picking up a plate and I'll wake up six hours later covered in rice and sauce. <laughs> And I can't theme a buffet. I can't theme a buffet either. I won't pick up a plate and go, oh, I'll have some rice, I'll have some curry. Well done, Ed, you've made yourself an Indian meal. <laughs> <laughs> won't do that. I'll get a plate, I'll get a spoon, and I'll run along the full line of trays, <laughs> just scraping food from every nation onto it until I've got some sort of plate pangea, <laughs> just an unidentifiable mass, just Spanish food, Japanese food, Chinese food, Indian food, coffee, sushi, just horrible. <laughs> just wedge my face into it, everyone going, is that man all right? Don't look at me! <laughs> I'm having a buffet! <laughs> from all over the world. My body for ten days had no idea where I was on this planet. <laughs> I went for a shit three days in, a UN flag came out. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Get on, Parker. Hey, Gamble! Come on back. <laughs> the next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the border, six categories. Nathan, which category would you like? Uh, it's got to be sport, please. OK, cool. Your category is sport. The answer is one billion. What is the question? Um, how many white people apologised to me when 12 Years Slave was in cinema? <laughs> <laughs> really, really sad. <sorry. laughs> I don't know him. It's cool, don't worry. <laughs> is it how many pounds in cash did the Queen hide under her bed when she'd seen that Jeremy Corbyn had been elected leader? <laughs> Family security <laughs> is at risk. <laughs> is it, how does someone with a cold say one million? <clears throat> <laughs> that 
could be what caused the financial crisis. <laughs> <in the first laughs> yeah. is, it, is it how many wives would Henry VIII have had if he'd been on Tinder? <laughs> <laughs> I shall have her. <laughs> and I shall have her. <laughs> Am I even flicking the right way out? I shall have her. OK. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, okay. no, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> or is it how many crisps can you eat before you bleed to death? <laughs> <laughs> Having a spiky, spiky poo. <laughs> <laughs> is it from a spiky poo? <laughs> or as, as the Scots call it, bitey shitey. <laughs> <laughs> is it what is the first thing that happens in Billy Elliot the musical? <clears throat> One, Billy on. <laughs> <laughs> is it uh, how many of Hillary Clinton's emails were actually spam asking her if she wanted to increase her penis size? <laughs> How many traces of urine are there in a peanut bowl in a piss on your hands club? Is that one? Is it how many times since Saturday, right times since Saturday has Andy Burnham gone bollocks? <laughs> Uh, can we move towards the correct answer, please? Uh, OK. How many tracks are there on the compilation album The Best of Sound? That's got to be the answer, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was only released. We it was released this week. <laughs> things to improvise around that now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this really is the best of sound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it's how much... Um, income will be generated by the Rugby World Cup. That's absolutely right, Hugh. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, the answer we're looking for was by how much money is the forthcoming Rugby World Cup expected to boost the economy in the UK? The tournament, which is being hosted by England for the first time since 1991, begins on Friday and is expected to attract almost half a million overseas visitors. Is people getting excited? Yes, there's only one sleep until the Rugby World Cup <laughs> and then 25 more sleeps. There's a snooze spirit because it's so boring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can do super 45 it goes on for a while, actually. You're excited. You, you. Yeah, I'm and excited. Yeah. I'm excited, yeah, you know. There are very few games where before you go out on the pitch, you decide there's probably a need for you to gaffer tape your own ears to your head. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they do. They... In case people bite them, in case people chew their ears. Yeah. But and not the, like in a nice, nibbly way, like, oh, no, this no, is, no. you're playing it's really a, well. It's a re <laughs> 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 That's what we do at netball. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, it's the Ellings boy with the, the opening ceremony. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, is a doctor just explaining concussion? <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing I do find fascinating is that how well behaved they are in rugby. It's like so, well, someone, I'm used to football where like they argue all the time. Like rugby's like cricket in a sense that they just obey. Like in cricket, if you're given out, you don't you don't argue. It's like why are you not arguing? This, the umpire's an old guy with a cardigan. You're a young athlete with a bat. You can make him change his mind. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody sent me the Ireland jersey. The, the company who makes them sent me the Irish jersey in large, and it was, it's ludicrous. It is like a child's t shirt because they, they wear them out incredibly tight so that no one can grab them. There's nothing to hold on to anymore. So it's all changed. And I, I, I put it over my head with my hands to it and then had to get somebody to <laughs> roll it down my torso. And then you suddenly... look a bit like the thing at the end that they throw the ball across. <laughs> 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 Sarah, but before you make jokes like that, you need to make sure you know posts as a word. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Nepo, you don't throw the ball over the post. It'll be wonderful at the very end of the World Cup final, they just threw the ball over the post. Right? Yay! <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> not how you score. It's confusing. Okay, it's so a kicking, though. So you yeah. kick it you through kick, the post. You kick, you kick, and, and then the game's kick. over. And no, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a happy day for me that somebody on the show knows less about sport than I do. <laughs> I'm sitting here now, I feel like Eddie Waring. Uh, <laughs> Eddie Waring, who was rugby league. <laughs> 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 in the line, what yes, happens yeah. is they, they throw the ball in, and they're actually, it's a bit like cheating, because two of them can lift up a player <gasps> so as they jump higher to get it, right? But oh, if, oh. if there's eight in the line, why don't they take the cheating further, get three of them to lift up two of them, yes. to lift up one of them? <laughs> yes. And and it's, it's like Strictly or something. There's, there's like, they're all standing there and suddenly from nowhere one of them like just appears out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> like, Do they know it's a 
think they're actually reaching for the ball. Rather, they should do they, more. Do they, they, should, they, 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 should play the, they should play the music from Dirty Dancing when that happens. Oh, that'd be fantastic. The time of my life. So the person who gets lifted up, do they yeah. know it's going to happen, or is it surprise? <laughs> 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 Sometimes they think it's the rapture. Uh, <laughs> and they think, oh, take me now, Lord. Oh, no, no. <laughs> and then they're immediately run over by eight Frenchmen. Uh, so, <laughs> but it, it, it's a very it's beautiful a game. game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, moving on. Who have scientists discovered in a cave this week? I'm so excited about the story, it, but I can't pronounce the name and I'm worried about... I know they're not here to get offended. They're um, not. <laughs> the Homo Nalidi, or uh, Nalidi. Nadali. N Homo Nadali. Yeah. Nadali. Homo Nalidi. Homo Can we just say without that moment where he corrected your pronunciation by getting the word completely wrong? Yes. <laughs> Can we all just enjoy that for a second? <laughs> it is, it's impossible to say it. I was probably yeah. Yeah. Without 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 doing the a milady. His full name is Homo No Lady No Cry. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I love this story is so they found a few bodies from 100 years apart in a cave. Oh. This guy, <laughs> this is here. That's a Homo No Lady. Um, yeah. The find was announced last Thursday by the South African University of the Wattwatersrand, National Geographic and the UK Science Journal eLife. That is a spooky cover uh, of the National Geographic, yes. Yeah, they have your hooded eyes. There. But the thing is, this is all... <laughs> <laughs> I would find it very hard to believe if the production staff of the show had not done a photograph of that and made it look like you. Uh -oh. I would like to go... <laughs> I am not doing the face. Well, listen, I'll tell you Hold one thing. Face. I am not getting on that mega bus. Yeah. <laughs> 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 now, that, I think, is the thing. Um, what, I think, think we know where this is going now, don't we? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> wow. You look the happiest out of all three. How did they die? Do you know how they died? No, I don't know. They were know. shot by an American dentist. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Now, that is too soon. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The end of that round. The points go to Ed, Sarah and Andy. <laughs> yeah. Now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read out this week's topics, then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Rejected exam questions. <laughs> History. Did I delete it? <laughs> if cycling 10 miles a day uses up 400 calories, explain why Boris Johnson is still a fat bastard. <laughs> if the sun is 93 million miles away, how can that cost £32 in an Uber? <laughs> Where is Greece? Is it A, the southern Mediterranean, or B, up shit creek? <laughs> what does the French phrase déjà vu literally translate as? <laughs> <laughs> Using examples of Michelangelo's work, write 500 words on why he was the best turtle. <laughs> What does the French phrase déjà vu <laughs> literally translate as? <laughs> Question A. Media studies. Is it a real subject? <laughs> Question B. Is it... <laughs> Using a compass and ruler, draw perfect cock and balls. Is this a rhetorical question? <laughs> you may now commence your anal sex exam. Please turn over. <laughs> Explain how UKIP became a major force in British politics without using the word wanker. <laughs> <laughs> if
If Jay-Z is unfortunate enough to have a problem with a bitch, how many problems does Jay-Z now have? <laughs> Aggravated violence, question one. Why might you use a bit of rubber hose pipe? <laughs> no marks. <laughs> what colour is this dress? White and gold or black and blue? Discuss. <laughs> if a train leaves the station at the correct time and arrives at its destination at the correct time, how cool would that be? <laughs> <laughs> Chemistry, me, you. Is there any? <laughs> okay, the next topic is unlikely things to say when running for US president. I'm Hillary Clinton, and if you elect me the first female president of the United States, I promise you that on my first day in the White House, I will hire a very attractive male intern. He will be on his knees, not having sexual relations with me all day. <laughs> hashtag payback, hashtag long game. <laughs> I want to go to Washington. Why? I want to see what color the White House is. <laughs> No, we can't! <laughs> <laughs> the name Clinton is in the DNA of the White House. In fact, the DNA of Clinton on the walls of the White House. <laughs> I know the value of family because I sold one of my children to pay for this campaign. <laughs> As president, I will welcome immigrants. Because the White House is massive and it's not going to clean itself. <laughs> I will govern for all of this country. Not just the metropolitan cities on the coast, but also you cousin shaggers down south. <laughs> I would like to introduce you to my new Homeland Security Advisor. Say hi, Lamb Chop. Hi. <laughs> Come on, of course I'm the guy to succeed Obama. You know what they say? Once you go black. <laughs> if you elect me America's first colorblind president, I will do everything I can to uphold the values of the brown, white, and green. I would now like to talk to you people in a language of my own devising. <laughs> I want to put more boots on the ground in Afghanistan and also two more branches of paper chase. <laughs> what you must remember is the people we need to convince are the great American people. And most of them are as thick as pictures. <laughs> I'd like to apologize for Mr. Trump. Which is what I say when I've just farted in bed. <laughs> when I was little, I did not plan to be President of the United States. This is more like a holding job until I get to rule a good country. <laughs> I am American through and through. Cut me, and I will shoot you in the face. <laughs> I wish to have no secrets in this campaign. I wish to be completely open, and it is done. That is why. I'm going to start that again, because I fucked that up. <laughs> we Republicans want to reach out to all Americans. Blacks, whites, Chinesey-looking ones. <laughs> I want to have no secrets in this campaign, and that is why I have gathered you here tonight to tell you I shot gay at JFK. Okay, give it a round for your head, Sir Andy. And that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Nathan Cason, Hugh Dennis, and Ed Burns.
commiserations to Andy Parsons, Sarah Pascoe and Ed Gamble. Thanks for watching. I'm Dara Breen. Good night. I also, the weird thing is that because he's a he's an Arsenal supporter, he's a good match. But the uh, that but comes as no surprise. Yeah, well, he's, 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 yes, well, he's, 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 isn't he? For God's sake! But well, not so much that. Any... But it's a perfor bunch of underperforming Reds who are hooked on the outmoded <laughs> concepts of a foreign intellectual who, when they tried to put a team together this year, couldn't get anybody decent to join them. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Weapons grade analogy there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, it, 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 it's, 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 it's I mean, do you, how did the Cameron react? Do you see the Cameron's reaction to it? Security is the key word. There's yes. a lot about security. Ah. He sent, uh, sent out this tweet. In fact, no one sent out this exact tweet, but it came from the Labour Party is now a threat to our national security, our economic security, and your family security. <laughs> <laughs> Not my family. My family are fine. We live in a big house with two policemen outside the front. Mm. But your family, where are they now? Do you think that for a second? Look around. Can you see them? No, I can't see them either. He's Climbed in the window and stolen them. That's what you do. <laughs> Your family are gone, my friend, and I have a unique set of skills to return my family. <laughs> I will. Oh, whatever he, Liam Neeson does. Um, <laughs> you, see, you see that tweet, and then you see a picture of Jeremy Corbyn, supposedly the most dangerous man in Britain. This is the man who's a 66 year old beige pensioner who's a past. <laughs> If Jay-Z is unfortunate enough to have a problem with a bitch, how many problems does Jay-Z now have? <laughs> <laughs> Aggravated violence, question one. Why might you use a bit of rubber hose pipe? <laughs> no marks. <laughs> what colour is this dress? White and gold or black and blue? Discuss. <laughs> If a train leaves the station at the correct time and arrives at its destination at the correct time, how cool would that be? <laughs> <laughs> Chemistry. Me, you. Is there any? <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Unlikely things to say when running for US president. I'm Hillary Clinton, and if you elect me the first female president of the United States, I promise you that on my first day in the White House, I will hire a very attractive male intern. He will be on his knees, not having sexual relations with me all day. <laughs> hashtag payback, hashtag long game. <laughs> I want to go to Washington. Why? I want to see what color the White House is. <laughs> I am not doing the face. Well, listen, I'll tell you Hold one thing. Face. I am not getting on that mega bus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, that, I think, is the thing. Um, I think we know where this is going now, don't we? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> wow. You look the happiest out of all three. How did they die? Do you know how they died? No, I don't know. They were know. shot by an American dentist. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Now, that is too soon. Yeah. <laughs> okay. At the end of that round, the points go to Ed, Sarah and Andy. <laughs> now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read out this week's topics, then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Rejected exam questions. <laughs> History. Did I delete it? <laughs> if cycling 10 miles a day uses up 400 calories, 
Explain why Boris Johnson is still a fat bastard. <laughs> The sun is 93 million miles away. How can that cost £32 in an Uber? Green, <laughs> joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Sarah Pascoe, and Ed Gamble, Nathan Caton, Hugh Dennis, and Ed Byrne. <laughs> we start with a round called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what's happening. Here's a picture of the new Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn. So what's going on here? Has he been sleeping in the bin on the right? <laughs> <laughs> it's the idea it could be the oldest delivery boy in the world still hasn't figured out how to hold a pizza correctly. <laughs> <laughs> As, I, I suspect he's dressed up for his first meeting with the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> Is it just simply first day at big school? <laughs> Is, is it breaking mm. news, Marks and Spencer's murder of Sports Direct? <laughs> I think possibly it's page three of The Socialist Worker. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you told me that was Jeremy Corbyn. For, for a second I was worried that's what Charlie Brown looks like now. <laughs> yeah. And that folder actually contains Snoopy's ashes. <laughs> Please, please. Oh. Snoopy's long dead. I think it's a uh, 66-year-old legend still got it going on. <laughs> I reckon the, the owners of number 48 are probably very proud to be able to show off their garden like that. <laughs> 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 it, was a, it was a Tuesday! Yeah. It was a... <laughs> Is it how many wives would Henry VIII have had if he'd been on Tinder? <laughs> <laughs> I shall have her. <laughs> and I shall have her. <laughs> Am I even flicking the right way out? I shall have her. OK. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, OK. No, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> or is it how many crisps can you eat before you bleed to death? <laughs> <laughs> Having a spiky, spiky poo. <laughs> Is it from a spiky poo? <laughs> or as, as the Scots call it, bitey shitey. <laughs> <laughs> is it what is the first thing that happens in Billy Elliot the musical? <clears throat> One, Billy on. <laughs> <laughs> is it uh, how many of Hillary Clinton's emails were actually spam asking her if she wanted to increase her penis size? <laughs> How many traces of urine are there in a peanut bowl in a piss on your hands club? Is it how many times since Saturday has Andy Burnham gone bollocks? <laughs> Uh, can we move towards the correct answer, please? Uh, OK. How many tracks are there on the compilation album The Best of Sound? <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's the Ellings Boy with the, the opening ceremony. Uh, oh, yeah. Is a doctor just explaining concussion? <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing I do find fascinating is that how well behaved they are in rugby. It's like so, well, someone, I'm used to football where like, they argue all the time. Like rugby's like cricket in a sense that they just obey. Like in cricket, forgiven out, you don't you don't argue. It's like why are you not arguing? This, the umpire's an old guy with a cardigan. You're a young athlete with a bat. You can make him change his mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody sent me the Ireland jersey. The, the company makes them sent me the Irish jersey in large, and it was it's ludicrous. It is like a child's t-shirt because they, they wear them out incredibly tight so that no one can grab them. There's nothing to hold on to anymore. So it's all changed. And I, I, I put over my head with my hands to it and then had to get somebody to <laughs> roll it down my torso. <laughs> and then you look a bit like the thing at the end that they throw the ball across. <laughs> <laughs> like that. And then Sarah, they throw before you make jokes like that, you need to make sure you know posts as a word. <laughs> 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 it's not Nepal, you don't throw the ball over the post. <laughs> It'll be wondering about the very end of the World Cup final, they just threw the ball over the post. Right? Yay! <laughs> That's <laughs> not how you score. It's too confusing. Okay, so kicking, though. So you yeah. kick you it through the post. And then the game's kick. over. And no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a happy day for me that somebody on the show knows less about sport than I do. <laughs> I'm sitting here now, I feel like Eddie Waring. Uh, <laughs> Eddie, Eddie Waring, Waring who was rugby league. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <there we> go. <laughs> In the line, what yes, happens yes. is that who's a pacifist vegan cyclist. The most dangerous man in Britain, he's in trouble if there's a lorry turning left and he hasn't had his B12 supplements. <laughs>
Do you think the, the, the subtext is that the Labour Party is now a threat to our national security, economic security and your family security because now they've become completely unelectable? We Tories are going to go hog wild on this country! <laughs> it feels like Cameron's got the Labour Party mixed up with the bad guys from Transformers. <laughs> And Transformers. The Decepticons. <laughs> <laughs> hey. The Decepticons. The Decepticons. The Decepticons. The Decepticons. I think we've just spotted the nerd of the nerd yes. of the nerd. <laughs> I think that would be exciting. I was saying to my friend, like, imagine if we had a genuinely pacifist prime minister. You spend the defence budget on education, you put Trident on eBay. Like, it just, uh, it'd be so brilliant. And my friend was like, yeah, and then what about if Britain is invaded and everyone's family is killed? Like, yeah, he probably won't get re-elected. <laughs> <laughs> Great thing! If you do buy Trident on eBay, I think it's not a bad idea, but if you do, if you're yeah. buying it, come and collect it. It's not, mm. the, it's not the kind of thing you want delivered. <laughs> <laughs> I actually agree with uh, Corbyn about the whole Trident yeah. stuff, because I'm, I'm not a massive fan of Trident, I'm more of an airwaves person myself. <laughs> <laughs> what does the French phrase déjà vu literally translate as? <laughs> ah. Using examples of Michelangelo's work, write 500 words on why he was the best turtle. <laughs> What does the French phrase déjà vu <laughs> literally translate <laughs> Question A. Media studies. Is it a real subject? <laughs> Question B. Is it... <laughs> Using a compass and ruler, draw perfect cock and balls. Is this a rhetorical question? <laughs> you may now commence your anal sex exam. Please turn over. <laughs> Explain how UKIP became a major force in British politics without using the word wanker. If Jay-Z is unfortunate enough to have a problem with a bitch, how many problems does Jay-Z now have? <laughs> Are you saying that? Well, ultimately, I'm sorry, well, you were all born bad t-shirts and shorts. It just sucks with the, with the, with the trainers is the only genuinely offensive thing there. Yeah. And not using cocoa butter. <laughs> and not using cocoa butter. Oh, yeah, he's, he's, he's a 66-year-old man. I'm not, I think so. There's okay. no age restriction on cocoa butter. <laughs> I'm really 55. <laughs> <laughs> it is Jeremy Corbyn who was elected leader of the Labour Party on Saturday, winning a landslide majority of 59.5% of the vote. Uh, so, how are we doing? The new era under Corbyn. It's exciting. Um, it's really exciting. I'm so happy and I'm not going to let you guys ruin it for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to. And that's reasonable, isn't it? Because, I mean, there's nothing weird about Jeremy Corbyn at all, is it? <laughs> Well, he's right there, isn't he? Because in, in an era of identikit politicians, it is about time we had a leader of a major party who looks like he should be advertising canal boat holidays. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not surprised that he won. I'm surprised that he won by like, such a large majority. Like, he got so many votes, like, even the organisers of the Qatar World Cup were going, how the hell do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> His first congratulation call was from Sepp Blatter, actually, just... Uh... <laughs> I feel really sorry for him because even though he's actually won this, people in Labour don't even seem to like him. And I think it's because he is so good. Like, he's a saint. He's so pure. He's so principled. <laughs> <laughs> he collects pictures of drain covers. OK. We yeah. he is, is that a thing? He is the nerd of the nerds. And obviously